Oh, See, I'm sure you won't mind if I use this intro to practice my boxing skills for the next fight against Ben Gibson. <laughs> oh, shit, I've hit the table. Yeah, I can't move my hand now, so this is going to be awkward. In the last episode, we took on fellow promotion rivals West Brom at home and beat them by two goals to one with a winner from Steve Mounier. And he finally returned to the fold and has finally started scoring. And that has actually coincided with a great run of form recently. I also wanted to start this episode by talking about Nick Powell because he went to the press and said that he might leave because he's not playing enough. And then I warned him for unprofessional behaviour. Then he said he was going to improve his behaviour. So I put him into the team and that's coincided with also a great run of form. I feel like I'm just being a little bitch at the moment. I've given him to one player's demands and now he's actually carrying me to the title. But as you can tell by our most recent results, we've won pretty much every game since we beat West Brom in the last episode. And Nick Powell has been super recently he scored a free kick against Sheffield Wednesday which was his first goal of the season Steve Mounier has also hit form again as he scored two goals against Sheffield Wednesday in a 4-0 win uh, Chris Brunt also managed to get the worst miss of the season as he missed an open goal away at Swansea when we won 2-0 and finally, Nick Powell once again managed to win the game for us against Derby County with a long range strike. You love to see it. But we also did get our first draw of the season away at Rotherham United. I mean, it's always Rotherham on the series. I feel like they're OP or they're just here to annoy me. I mean, Ashley Rhymes, I've got some bars and we're going to hit some bars and... Yeah, I've got nothing. I also found out that Sam Allardyce was sacked as Swansea manager after his poor control over their finances at the club and also the fact that they've led them to 18. I mean, the fact Sam Allardyce is at Swansea is baffling as it is. In the last episode, I also mentioned that we lost to Blackburn by two goals to one. I found out they're managed by David Moyes. I mean, are all the footballing dinosaurs in this division? Callum hudson Odoi has finally been named in Team of the Week and it's only taken until November. I mean, the blokes won Player of the Month twice, Young Player of the Month three times and finally gets into Team of the Week. Steve Bruce also stormed out of a press conference before the game against us where they lost 4-0 and after we beat him 4-0 he got sacked as manager. Nick Powell also was named in Team of the Week recently, which is fantastic news because he's resurrected his career at Huddersfield. Although I say resurrected, I mean he's only been here like three months and it cost me eight million, so I will definitely be playing him. Gareth Southgate also appeared in my newsfeed before the game against Ireland and uh, he said that he hopes to win and then the day after he resigns. I mean, why is he resigned? Oh. That makes sense. I think I might apply for the job. I should be able to gear. I mean, the miracles I'm performing at Huddersfield, really. After our 1 1 draw away at Rotherham, Ola Olu said on social media that uh, he or she, I don't even know if it's a he or she. We've got with they. Can't be assuming genders in 2019, guys. Oh no, I've just done it again. But Ola Olu said that they can't wait to see that match again on one of those nostalgia football shows. A 1 1 draw away at Rotherham. How is that nostalgic? I mean, it's probably the biggest result in their history. Brexit has also happened, and uh, I don't think it's actually the hardest Brexit we can get. Although saying that, it probably is. I also didn't get the England job, which is an absolute disgrace, and they gave it to Nuno Espirito Santo. Although, to be fair, they probably want a manager that can speak English, so I was probably out of the running anyway. After we defeated Wigan at home, Paul Cook was also sacked as manager. I mean, that's two sackings in one episode, and they didn't involve me. Jonas Lursel is now out for seven weeks, which isn't great news for us because it means that we are now down to three goalkeepers. And then my third choice goalkeeper, Joel Coleman, then got injured for six weeks, which means we're now down to two keepers. FA Cup third round draw day came around and I was really excited to get someone really shit at home. And then we got Leeds United away. I mean, that'll do though, because we got a local derby against Leeds United who are just up the roads or down the roads. Or maybe across. I, I don't even know where Leeds is compared to Huddersfield. It's somewhere in Yorkshire. I failed my geography GCSE. I got a C. That's not really a fail. I don't know what I'm going on about now. And now into our game against Stoke City away from home. Now, Stoke City are just outside the playoffs. Hence why I've picked this game. Because the rest of the games we played recently are against relegation threatened sites. So I need a more difficult game. And no one likes going away to Stoke. I mean, I've already slagged them off in this series once. I'm going to slag them off again. And starting us off in goal is Cole Darlow. We do have an injury crisis in our goalkeeper area. Uh, it means that Ryan Schofield from the reserves, who's only like 20 years old, uh, comes onto the bench. 
And if I have to play him anytime soon, then our promotion race is going to fall apart. Tommy Smith is suspended, which means Oscar Burr comes in at right back in the only change really from last episode. We have reverted back to the 4-2-3-1. So Nick Powell starts off in the number 10 spot with Sampa and Williams playing in CDM. And finally, the front three is once again the same. There's literally never going to be a change anytime soon, I don't think. Stoke City's front two is Jordan Shugill and Sam Vokes. I mean, could you get any more stoked than that? But I was saying that they have had a strike force of Kenwin Jones, Cameron Jerome, and Peter Crouch before, so you probably could get more stoked than that. I'm not sure there's much more I can say on about Stoke other than the fact that we're playing there in December and it's probably incredibly windy. Is Stoke famous for anything? I mean, I'm racking my brains. We were on the front foot from the start, and after about 15 minutes, Danny Williams found space about 25 yards out and hit a rasping shot which hit the post, and that was it. Like, no, no one decided to pounce on that. And before you knew it, it was goalless at half time. You see how I'm trying to mix it up? I don't want to keep saying it was nil nil at half time because the more I say it, the more likely I'm going to trademark that saying. We started ramping up the pressure in the second half, and Elias Kachunga did some good work down the right, put the ball into the box for Steve Mounier to force a good save out of Jack Butland. I mean, this is the first time I've seen the lad since I unsuccessfully tried to sign the lad last winter. And then Nick Powell laid the ball off for Hudson Adoy, who put the ball across the box for Steve Mounier to once again put us into the lead. You love to hear that. I mean, what's better than Steve Mounier scoring Hudson Adoy just doing something? I feel like we're going to have to rename him soon to uh, Callum Huddersfield Adoy. I mean, is that possible? A good ball into the box by Sam McQueen that found Elias Kachungo who hit the bar, and then Steve Mounier decided to tackle the defender rather than go for the ball. I feel like there's nothing Steve Mounier can't do. That's it, Proudy. Just uh, recycled the content from last episode, but just changed the player name. Nick Powell also got himself injured, which is the least surprising news of the episode. But he wasn't just all us, as Julian Ngoy got a chance as he ran through the middle of the pitch, but his shot was well saved by Carl Darlow. What a goalkeeper that Carl Darlow is. Always had faith in the boy. It wasn't over just yet as Khan Iron's corner found Elias Kachunga who hit the bar or Jack Butler and saved it. I don't know really. It didn't really tell me in the commentary. And that was pretty much it. We managed to hold on for the 1-0 win away at Stoke which has taken us to second position in the table. This, this is light work for me. This is light work. I mean, all I need to do to get success on this channel is to get relegated from the top division and then spend too much money in the second division. And I'll win every game. Except against Rotherham, obviously. So apparently Nick Powell pulled up short when he was chasing the ball against Stoke and it only found out that he had a bruised knee. A bruised knee and he had to come off for that. Are you taking the piss?